Hey folks, John here, Old Hickory Forge, welcome back. So, what's going on today is October's charity build. This month we're giving to the Humane Society, specifically the Humane Society of Burke County. There's a shelter out there I do some volunteer work at. And what we're going to be making is a skinning knife with a hollow grind, which is something that I've never really done before, so that should be pretty interesting. Well, I won't go as far as to say is never done, because I have actually already gone through and filmed an entire video doing the build that this was originally going to be. It was originally going to be, I had made up this really beautiful, you can't really see the pattern, but this is canister Damascus made a 1084 in ball bearings. It was a great looking knife. It, everything was going well until it came time to normalize it before the quench. And I don't know if you can see or not, that right there, that crack, that actually happened during normalizing. It didn't happen during the quench. And the reason I'm thinking it is, is because doing the hollow grind, I took this edge down very, very thin. It's almost a millimeter thin. And because hollow grinding, there's more surface area, the belt in contact with the metal and it heats up faster. And I wanted to remove as little material after the heat treat as possible. But because that edge was so thin, I just think that uh, the difference in thicknesses caused this metal to contract faster as it cooled down. And the, uh, the steel, it just cracked. It cracked across one of the bearings. So the pattern welding was not at fault. It was just the... Uh, it was just the, the thickness. It was too thin. So lesson learned, leave your edge thick before you go in for your heat treating. So what I got here, bar 1084. We're just going to forge basically the same knife out of that. I really like the shape and the size and everything, so that's what we're going with. The difference is I'm going to leave the edge thicker before I do the, uh, the heat treating. It's still going to be a beautiful knife, and it's going to be just as serviceable. It's just not going to be made of canister Damascus, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. So to get us started, here's a barrage of pictures of me with shelter cats. This is going to be a pretty run-of-the-mill forging out a blade project. I'll just start by pulling out a point, trying to get as little fish mouthing as possible. Just keep working it down, using the edge of the anvil to hopefully avoid too much fish mouthing. Then we'll use the bottom fuller to isolate what we want to use to make the handle. Start working on bringing out the material behind our uh, behind our mark. Just take a couple heats and press up the profile of your handle and bring it back to a uniform thickness with the rest of the bar. Lay in some shallow edge bevels. I don't need to gain a whole lot of width, I just kind of need to bring the point into the center line with the handle. So there's not a whole lot of work to do here. So, here we are forged out. It's about the same size as the previous knife that I'm going off of. I'll cut off that clip point, make it into a nice drop point. Got a nice handle section to work with. I'll go ahead and normalize this thing three times while it's still attached to the parent bar, and uh, we'll hit the grinder. So, here we are. Got the profile I want to make marked out. Nice drop point. Uh, so, all I'm going to do is go ahead and grind the handle section nice and flat. Grind out the profile. I'm going to try to leave some of the forge texture on the spine. I feel like it'll look good because the hollow grind is going to be highly polished, and I think the, uh, the contrast is going to look good. But that's what's going on. Let's get moving. <laughs> So, normally when I'm grinding flats on a blade, I'll just stick the whole knife on a welding magnet and surface grind the whole thing flat. But because I'm trying to leave this part of the knife relatively untouched, just using a push stick, 
Just wanted to explain that to you real quick so you don't think I look stupid doing it. So here after the quench, she hardened well. That gray color is a good indicator of fully formed martensite. So there's no need to do a soft back draw because this isn't gonna be a hard use knife. So I'm just gonna, I've got it clamped up vertically in the vise and I'm just gonna try to temper the whole thing to a pretty uniform light straw brown there about. So here we are after tempering. I just kind of wanted to talk to you about it for a little bit. Now. Most knife making videos, you'll see people just throw a knife in an oven at 400 degrees for an hour or two, and you can certainly do that. But what I found is if you expose this knife to a uniform ambient heat source, the heat can bleed into the areas of the knife that are thinner like the edge faster and actually make them softer than you want them to be. So tempering by eye is a good skill to know. You don't necessarily have to do it, but it works good for me. Went ahead and took the handle back to blue, figured it wouldn't hurt anything, but I got a nice uniform straw on the blade. Just wanted to show you that you can achieve a uniform temper you know, by eye if you, with practice, and it's a lot faster. So, now it's time to finish grinding this thing, take it up through the grits, bring the edge down to its final thickness. Leaving it thicker was really wise. I didn't have any problems at all going into the quench. So we'll just take it all the way up through 800 grit, and then when we buff, polish it up on the buffing wheel, it should give us a near mirror finish. As you can see, I've gone ahead and drilled some extra holes in the handle to take some of the weight off. But that's all we got going on now. Let's get going. So, I got the blade polished up. It'll be polished again when the knife is finished, so it'll be a little better looking than this. Now it's time to start on the handle, and a few people have asked me to go and do a little more detail on handle construction. This is obviously a full tang. A good idea is to countersink your pinholes just a little bit, as well as chamfer the edges of the uh, stock that's gonna be your pins. I'm using eighth inch brass. The reason for that is if these are misaligned by even one ten thousandths of an inch and you have hard edges on there, they're going to catch and you're going to have a really hard time getting everything to fix up. This way you have just the tiniest, tiniest little bit of play and it, it just helps it go together smoother. That's a quick little trick that I've learned. Another trick I've found to be really helpful when you're working with uh, larger pieces of wood to make your handle material, leave it, don't rip it until after you drill the holes. That way, once you rip it down on the table saw, you've got a good match set of scales and all the holes will line up. You don't have to worry about drilling holes in one scale and then flipping it over and trying to drill holes in the other one or taping the scales to the knife or anything like that. This is just the way that works for me. And if you lined everything up well, it should just kind of snap together, kind of like that. Put our other scale on. There we go. And prop it up over the jaws of your vise. Hammer your pins through. Nothing to it. See what I mean? Then just throw some clamps on that thing, let it set up, and you're good to go. Here's the finished knife. Still need to polish it a little more. There's smudges all over the uh, the grind and everything. It's almost a perfect mirror. It's not perfect, but it's pretty close. Went with some blood wood, full tank construction, obviously. Blood wood's a great choice for a skinning knife. One, because it's red, blood's not gonna stain it. And because it's very naturally dense and oily and rot resistant. Put a lanyard hole on it because uh, you might not think a skinning knife needs a lanyard hole, but it's really useful because especially if it's cold out and uh, you're skinning out a deer or a large animal or something like that, sometimes you have to grab the hide and pull it with both hands. And this way you could just kind of hang the knife off of your pinky 
That way you don't gotta stick it in a tree or in the ground or anything like that and dull the blade. How do you like that? The hollow grind was a pretty serious learning curve because I'd never done it before, but it produces a very thin, very sharp edge. So should be ideal for cutting soft tissue, things like that. But anyway, I was kind of pressed for time for this whole build because there's just a lot going on in the workshop right now and because my canister billet went to hell. But that just is what it is. So uh, like I said, this month, 75% of the profits are going to the Humane Society of Burke County. So if you're looking for a way to donate as well as own a knife hand forged by me, uh, this is your chance to do both. If you got suggestions for future charity builds, knives you'd like to see built, charities you'd like to see donated to, go ahead and drop them in the comments. And if you like what you saw, like, share, subscribe. Always give me more cool stuff coming. Y'all take care.